everyone, this is Roxy the Slayer and today I'm back with another coverage of the world's most dominating movie and TV news. With that, this video comes after a special occasion at the end of October, Halloween. I hoped you all had a spooky night as I wasn't feeling well so I missed out on all of the celebrations. I did go to see Harry Potter and Chamber of Secrets at the cinema at the weekend, as it was a Halloween treat I truly needed. Now with that out of the way, the stories I've got for you today are all exciting for the future. The first trailer for the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special has dropped, teasing a wholesome Christmas adventure for the Space Misfits. The first reviews for Black Pan for Wakanda Forever have dropped, with critics calling it emotional and a fitting tribute to Chadwick Boseman. And the DC Universe's future has changed forever, with James Gunn and Peter Safran taking over the studio's heads. All that in this video. Start this video off with exciting news as the first trailer for the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special has dropped, teasing a spectacular wholesome end to the year as well as Marvel's Phase 4. The special will follow the Guardians of the Galaxy celebrating Christmas as Drax and Mantis make make a perilous quest to get their leader Peter Quill a present as he has been reeling from the death of Gamora, fearing that he will be lonely during the holiday season. In their desperate search, they decide to kidnap legendary actor and Quill's idol Kevin Bacon in the hopes of raising Peter's spirits. Throughout the trailer, we see Groot who has nearly reached adulthood and looks more bulky than his teenage self. This makes me happy as I have been longing that a full, fully grown Groot would return in Volume 3, so to see this offspring in his adult stages is a thrilling sight. It also introduces a new character to the mix, Cosmo the Space Dog, will be played by Marla Bikavlova, with the character making her debut in this special before joining the cast in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. The special will see the members of the Guardians of the Galaxy return with Michael Rooker's Yondu Yudonta among them who had sadly died in Volume 2. I presume that his character will only show up for flashbacks as a way of showing Peter Quill's turbulent childhood with the Ravagers. This special looks full of wholesome fun as the fact that the Guardians are going out of their way to give Peter the best Christmas present anyone could have warms my heart. This special will serve as a conclusion to Phase 4, so it would be a nice way to conclude the year of quintessential Marvel projects we've been getting. The holiday special will be releasing on November 25th, so get ready for a festive knockout. So let's hope that this special presentation turns out for the best. But anyways, what do you think of the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special? Are you excited for the festive season? Let me know in the comments. We've gotten the first reviews for Black Pan for Wakanda Forever, which will serve as a tribute to the late Chadwick Boseman, who tragically passed away in 2020. The film will see the nation of Wakanda in mourning of their kin as they try to move forward into a better future. Wakanda will be in conflict with the underwater kingdom of Talokan as it will mark the debut of the villain Namor as well as Riri Williams who will become the armoured hero Ironheart. 
The film recently had its premiere last week and the feedback from critics has been outstanding to say the least. Here is two of the reviews from people who got er early access to the sequel. Lando on Twitter had this to say about the film. Wakanda Forever is outstanding. It handles loss, grief and revenge with a maturity and seriousness rarely seen in the MCU. Black Panther continues to be its crown jewel. Letitia Wright, Angela Bassett and Tenoch Huerta all bring some of the best acting we've seen all year. Another reviewer, Jermaine Lesua, also shared his thoughts on the film. Black Panther Wakanda Forever is as epic as Marvel sequels get. The story is hugely ambitious and thematically rewarding, with gut-wrenching twists and turns throughout. You feel the length, but it's fun, wildly beautiful, and has the best post credit scene in Marvel history. No contest. From these reviews alone, it looks like Black Panther Wakanda Forever will be a highly emotional film which will encapsulate the legacy Chadwick Boseman left behind on the superhero genre. With the tragic circumstances surrounding this film, it looks like the story will be the most ambitious Marvel's done yet, and I applaud the director Ryan Coogler as well as the film's cast and crew for carrying on the legacy of Chadwick and keeping his spirit alive. His presence will be surely missed, but, but this film will do a terrific job at capturing the grief and pain we all shared when he passed. I think it was the right decision for Marvel to not recast Shahal T'Challa as it was so recent and that it wouldn't have felt right to have replaced him. I'll be interested to see who'll take up a ma- the mantle of Black Panther in the coming future as I'm looking forward to this film. But what do you think of the reviews? Are you excited for Black Panther Wakanda Forever? I'm, intri- I'm intrigued to see how they'll continue the legacy of T'Challa and Black Panther on the big screen. What exciting news for the DCU! as James Gunn and Peter Safran have been appointed to the roles of co-chairman and chief executive officers at DC Studios. This comes after the triumphant release of Black Adam, which saw the hierarchy of power in the DC Universe change as a brighter future was set in stone. It was announced last Tuesday that Gunn and Safran would step in to run DC Studios with the watchful eye of Warner Bros Discovery CEO David Saslav. Gunn will be focusing on the creative side of things, while Safran will be dealing with the business aspects and all of the production that comes with it. Here's what James Gunn and Peter Safran had to say in a joint statement. We are honoured to be the stewards of these DC characters we've loved since we were children. We look forward to collaborating with the most talented writers, directors and actors in the world in order to create an integrated multi-layered universe that still allows for the individual expression of the artists involved. Our commitments to Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Harley Quinn and the rest of the DC staple of characters is only equaled by our commitment to the wonder of human possibility these characters represent. We're excited to invigorate the the fear to co-experience around the world as we tell some of the biggest, most beautiful and grandest stories ever told. This is very promising for the DC Universe, as it looks like it's getting back on track. The Universe has changed its name, with it going from the DCU, DC Extended Universe, to, 
to the DCU. It opens the possibility for us getting a more connective, sprawling universe where famed characters finally get the treatment they deserve. James Gunn has had experience with DC due to the fact he directed 2021's The Suicide Squad and its spin-off Peacemaker, so this can allow for more creative freedom for future projects and for the universe to build to a tantalising future. There are many films coming in the next few years, with Shazam and Aquaman sequels coming up, the Batman and, and its expanding universe of spin-offs, as well as the Joker sequel and a 100% confirmed Superman return, the DC universe is quickly expanding into fast interwining territory. It'll only take little time for the DCU to surpass the MCU as the, as the greatest cinematic universe of all time. But with that, what do you think of this news? Are you excited for the rebirth of the DC Universe? Let me know in the comments. Well, that's it for this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed the stories I've talked about today. On this channel I'm hoping to put out different content other than Tuesday Weekly as I have a few ideas up my sleeve so I'm hoping I can make time for it. But that's it for this video. Bye for now.